The SpaceX Starship is the most powerful rocket ever launched, which is a spectacular accomplishment for the private aerospace company. But the rise of the Starship came with one very major downside, which was the utter devastation of the Starbase launch pad. The 33 Raptor engine burn of the Super Heavy booster shattered even the strongest reinforced concrete, dug a hole down to the foundation of the launch mount, and sent chunks of rock flying like cannonballs for hundreds of meters in all directions. It was pretty cool, but obviously not a sustainable launch plan, so that's got people talking about how SpaceX will fix the problem. There are a bunch of theories floating around about flame diverters, trenches, moats. Elon Musk wants to install a liquid-cooled steel plate. But one thing that the conversation has reignited is the idea to use floating launch platforms. SpaceX even purchased two decommissioned oil drilling rigs specifically for this purpose. So if the Starship is too powerful for the land, then they should just launch it at sea. Makes sense, right? Well, it's more complicated than that. There are a lot of considerations that need to be made, and let's just say that there is a good reason SpaceX abandoned these oil rig platforms before Starship even made it into the sky. This is the Space Race. In 2020, SpaceX purchased two deep water oil rigs that were formerly owned by offshore drilling company Valeris. Public records show that Valeris sold rigs 8500 and 8501 for $3.5 million each in July 2020, shortly before the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So Elon got a wicked deal on a couple of giant floating platforms. For all we know, this could have just been an impulse buy. I mean, what's $7 million to Elon Musk, right? But this series of oil rigs was built in 2005 by an engineering firm called Ensco, so they weren't even very old. The 8500 platform is a semi-submersible rig with a main deck size of 240 feet by 255 feet. These things do not sit on the ocean floor, they float on pontoons that are pushed under the surface of the water to provide them greater stability. They are typically anchored to the bottom with a cable, but can also use water jet thrusters to stay in place. The rig uses a computer-controlled system to remain stable, even in harsh weather conditions. According to the National Industries Association, all platforms built since the late 1980s are designed to withstand up to Category 5 hurricanes. So, in theory, it sounds like a great platform to launch a rocket, and the original idea at SpaceX was to convert them into launching and landing platforms for the Starship. They even named the two rigs after the moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos. Elon Musk wrote on Twitter, SpaceX is building floating super heavy class spaceports for Mars, Moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth. This made so much sense as an observer. We know that SpaceX wants to build hundreds of starships that will launch multiple times per day on missions to Mars, the Moon, and low Earth orbit. And there aren't anywhere near enough pads at the Kennedy Space Center or any other land-based spaceport to accommodate that many launches. SpaceX has even talked about using Starship as a point-to-point -point transportation to different locations on the globe. For example, New York to Shanghai in 45 minutes. Obviously, you can't have rockets landing at the airport, so of course, a floating platform at sea would be the perfect solution. But after the initial story broke in early 2021, we never really heard much more about these rigs. The general thought was that SpaceX would need a lot of time to refurbish them into rocket platforms. The rigs were built around the idea of drilling for oil. They are covered in different towers and structures, crew quarters, and all kinds of stuff, so all of that existing infrastructure would need to be torn out before any progress can be made. By the middle of 2021, the deck on Phobos had partially been cleared and work on Deimos started around the same time. In March 2022, Deimos was moved to the same port as Phobos in Pascagoula, Mississippi. In early 2022, the progress for both rigs suddenly stopped. It wasn't until February 2023 that we received a proper update on the floating launch platforms, and it wasn't good news. 
SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell told reporters that the company had not only abandoned the project, but also sold the oil rigs. They were already gone. Gwynne did not appear to have any love lost for Phobos and Deimos. She simply explained, we bought them, we sold them, they were not the right platform. She followed that up with an explanation that would turn out to be somewhat of a prophecy referencing the Starship. Shotwell said, We really need to fly this vehicle to understand it, to get to know this machine, and then we'll figure out how we're going to launch it. And that's exactly what SpaceX did. They flew the Starship and it exploded. Then everyone very quickly realized that launching it off a flat slab on concrete was not the way to go. We'll assume Gwyn already knew that was going to happen, being the practical one in SpaceX management. Elon seems to have believed that the Fondag concrete would hold up for a single launch attempt, but in reality, it shredded it to bits after two seconds of exposure to full throttle. So, Shotwell was probably aware that the company had a big problem to solve on the land before they could even consider taking this out to sea. But Shotwell also made sure to not rule out the future of an ocean launch platform. In her final words on the subject, she told reporters, We have designed Starship to be as much like aircraft operations as we possibly can get. We want to talk about dozens of launches a day, if not hundreds of launches a day. We will have many pads to support that high launch rate. I think we'll have a lot of sea-based platforms as well. We have to see how this ship goes. The whole idea of the floating launch platform returned to the conversation surrounding how SpaceX will contain the destructive force of the Super Heavy booster on future launches. Zach Golden of CSI Starbase tweeted a rendering of a Starship prepping to launch at sea and wrote, This is the solution. Now, we know Zach is a super smart guy, so is he right about Starship launching at sea from a floating spaceport? Was SpaceX wrong? I Again, it's complicated, and things are never as simple as they first appear. If the exhaust from the booster is destroying the ground, then we could just have it shoot straight down through a hole in the platform into the ocean, which makes sense, but it was quickly pointed out by people who actually work on these rigs that the heat from the rocket would essentially boil the ocean directly underneath the floating platform, which would cause it to lose buoyancy. The density of hot water is lower than cold water, so it changes the displacement. We can't say by how much, but it would need to be very thoroughly modeled on a computer before even being considered. Also, boiling the ocean would essentially pasteurize the water and murder every living creature under the platform, which is probably not something you want to be doing on a regular basis. And even if you didn't care about boiling dolphins and stuff, the rocket would kick up a massive spray of seawater that would soak everything and be a nightmare for corrosion. You could maybe have a flame diverter like a traditional launch pad that would channel the exhaust out to the side, but since this is a floating platform, the thrust would just push it sideways and you probably don't want a moving launch pad at the moment of liftoff. So physics is one complication, but we also have to realistically consider the infrastructure. First, how do you get cryogenic liquid methane and oxygen out there to the platform? You'd probably need to invent some kind of bespoke tanker ship, which is a lot of work. Next, we need to transport the ship and booster out to the platform. This isn't like moving a Falcon 9 on a floating platform, and even those have tipped over while out at sea. Would you even be able to transport a ship with an integrated payload? So many things that we put into space are incredibly fragile. They can't be out there sloshing around in the waves at the top of a giant rocket. Or would payload integration have to happen on the platform? Could you maybe even float a fully stacked starship out to the platform Sea Dragon style? It's one of those ideas where the more you think about it, the more complex it becomes. So it's not really surprising that SpaceX put the whole thing on hold. Like when Shotwell said, the number one priority at the moment is figuring out how to fly Starship to orbit without having it explode on the way. That is the problem at hand. None of this matters until they have a successful rocket, and by expending any more energy on these sea launch platforms, all that SpaceX engineers will do is invent more and more problems that need to be solved, which are still totally irrelevant until they have a functional Starship. So I think that's the real reason why Gwyn Shotwell sold the oil rigs. The company finally had to face the reality of Starship. It will be a preposterously difficult puzzle to solve, 
and they need everyone focused on a single priority. They've already bet the farm on this rocket, it has to succeed, and nothing else matters until they accomplish that. So get Starship working right now, and then figure the rest out later. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.